emergency action is detrimental. <laughs> hey guys, welcome to a special edition of Actions Detrimental. I'm Denny Hamlin, the guilty party, apparently. Jared <laughs> Allen, my co-host. <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't know, purple yeah. vest guy. <laughs> yeah, let, who cares? Um, no, this is uh, certainly an episode I wish I didn't have. Uh, I'm going to try to keep it sw- short and sweet, but you know that sometimes I can just keep going. If y'all sense that, Jared, just give me the old wink that yep. uh, you've gone far enough. Um, you know, first, I, I thought the uh, appeals process is the first time I went through it. Uh, interesting, uh, to say the least. I thought that, uh, you know, both sides get a very fair uh, uh, presentation. You get fair time, equal time. You know, there's no real time limit to it. Uh, you can kind of do, you know, what you want. You present. You know, really, it's kind of uh, NASCAR presents. Um, and, and it was interesting, I should kind of lay out the rules, is that, um, they cannot bring up anything, uh, not pertinent to this case, you know, um, I, I that, that's one thing. So can you set the it, scene first? Yeah. Of what, yeah so what you this looks go like in there and you've got the three panelists. So it's just a room around. Yeah. A round table. It's kind of a big U conference room. Um, and then you've got, uh, uh me and my co-presenter, uh, on, on the end of the U on one side and NASCAR, uh, on the other side. Um, so this is you and a JGR and representative. Eric, yeah, 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 that's right. Uh, me and Eric Schaefer, the new, uh, C- CCO of Joe Gibbs racing. He came from, uh, the NFL. Um, he, uh, he, he helped me prepare this case and, and whatnot. So, uh, it was Brad Moran and, and, uh, Chad Little for the most part, they called in a few witnesses. I called in one as well. Uh, but yeah, I thought it was, um, I thought it was very, uh, a very fair, um way of doing things for sure they get to present and on the first uh appeal it's up to it's up to nascar to prove guilt and that's going to get interesting as i get talking okay so, a little bit so entering this room and discussion yep. you are innocent mm-hmm. and it is up to nascar to prove that you are guilty of that's correct what they're yeah and if you take it to final then you then have the burden of proof you must show okay. right okay um so I, I, I thought that, uh, you know, I didn't want to talk a whole lot about this case uh, the previous weeks because I knew I was preparing. I didn't want to give them kind of a, a heads up of what I was preparing. Um, I thought that we, you know, you have to submit a two page letter uh, 48 hours in advance of a kind of a summary of where your position is. Um, uh, and they'll give their two page um a summary of where they stand, right? And that way the panelists get to see it. And then you also have to submit any exhibits, um, which would be uh, video or um, any any text or anything like that. Anything you plan on bringing to show, uh, you should uh, you have to submit that 24, uh, 48 hours in advance, which is interesting. So I, I, I submitted it. I thought it was, was going just to the panel, but I guess they got to see everything that I submitted, uh, all my, all my evidence, all of anything I brought data, whatever it might be. Now I saw their opening letter. I saw their two page letter, which was very short, concise. And, and then I was like, is that it? And then, you know, cause we, we really went expansive with, with kind of our defense here. And, um, but I don't know if they saw, I'm guessing they saw everything I submitted, but I didn't. And then I asked the appeals panel, you know, were we supposed to see what they were going to, because they hand us like a little uh, um, binder of like some pictures and stuff like that. Um, but they were like, no, you can submit it later. So, so that's NASCAR, nor here nor there. NASCAR has already seen, when you enter the room, NASCAR has already seen what you're presenting. Yes, I, I, I guess you, so. You yeah, said so you had I to saw their letter. letter 48 I hours. saw their letter of where they stand and I saw they saw the letter certainly of where I stand and I'm guessing they saw everything that we submitted for evidence but i didn't see them submit any evidence until i got there um on that day okay so you're assuming that they have 48 hours to prepare based on the evidence you submit yep but it's in the rules that they can submit late if you want to that you know both sides can submit got it at any time now i'm saying this because this is uh this isn't proprietary secret information this is uh, this is in the rule book uh, any team can go see what the appeals process looks like. It is actually pretty long. Um, you know, I thought I had, um, I thought I had panelists that, uh, would be favorable, I guess maybe. Um, 
you know, you just don't know. You got a driver, Lynn St. James, um, certainly knows kind of drivers, you know, the code, ethics, things like that. Uh, promoter at um, Bowman Gray Stadium, which might, you know, there's, there's, a, that's kind of what they live off of is the wrecks and the crashes, the confrontations there. Um, and then you had uh, Hunter Nickel, the, uh, he's been on quite a few of these panels. So anyway, they were, they were great. They asked a lot of questions. Um, but interesting, you know, let me kind of get, you know, I, I won't on this, I don't want to get into much of what NASCAR said because I think it's up to them c to kind of state their case. Um, and, if they choose to publicly defend it or not, or they don't have to, right? Um, but I promised on this podcast I would be very transparent. Uh, so that's what I'm trying to do is kind of shed some light because it was very interesting from my standpoint uh, how this all played out. Um, so let me go back. Sorry, I keep getting ahead of myself. They present, okay? Then I present. And then we, um, let's see. That took a while. My, my present presentation was quite a bit longer um and then we break for 15 minutes and we regroup so i go in back into a conference room meet with you know my team and, and the people that helped prepare and everything and then we kind of talk about okay we heard what they had to say now it's rebuttal time so we go back in um we rebut first but then nascar has the last word uh so they they, you know, and, and at that time we both can call witnesses as well. So when I'm rebutting, I'm calling witnesses, you know, I'm really kind of just expanding upon what my opening statement was and whatnot in my defense. But then, you know, they, they call in, uh, their, their witnesses, um, you know, uh, which was Scott Miller and, um, and, uh, Mike Hilton. Interesting enough, I thought both of those guys were super fair to me. I thought Mike Hilton was like, man, talking about how great of a guy I am and how much I do for the sport. And I thought he was super fair in the sense of like, he even said to uh, the panel, which, you know, this, I'm only saying it cause it's nice about me. He was just like, you know, or, or the process is like, you know, sometimes we make decisions that aren't right, but it's up to you guys to decide whether that's the case or not. And so I was like, wow, that's very straightforward, political and great of Mike. I thought Mike was super fair and, and every, and really everyone was fair. I, I got no issues with anyone on the other side of that table. And again, they had a case to present. I did as well. It's important for me to kind of, you know, people really want to know, well, why did you appeal? The way we see it from our standpoint, you admitted you crashed so across should we casting. Should, we should go back just for people who might be tuning in this episode for the first time is what was NASCAR charging you with yep. more or less all right so uh charge one was race manipulation i relate i i manipulated the finish of the race phoenix raceway yep second was um i'm drawing a blank second was oh oh okay this is a key people there are three charges this total. is key that i crashed or spun a vehicle over the off season They've removed the word intent. Intent was taken out of the rule book. So what I say on my podcast, I don't know what it matters. My intent does not matter. They removed it in the off season. So I, be I believed, which was my fault, my mistake, that I could speak freely on Monday. The race was called. It was over with. And my intent doesn't matter, right? I just thought that I was free to speak and what I was doing was essentially uh, and what I said I want to do on this podcast is inform people of what they see or what they may not see on the racetrack and try to be a, a great source of information for them on that. Um, let me... Um, so three things. You were... Okay. So yeah. So race I, manipulation. I, race number that one. I manipulated the finish of a race and or championship. I crashed or spun a vehicle intent doesn't matter doesn't say on purpose intentionally any of that that's out of the rule book now right and then actions detrimental to the sport they they deemed uh we can't have you basically going out there and making a mockery of 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 our officiating i guess i guess that's what it but basically we can't, this is a bad look. You can't, drivers can't be going around saying that they're going to uh, wreck or spin others. 
um, and then go do it, right? Okay, I understand their, their, their stance, right? So now I have to, I need to defend it, right? So I'll read you kind of my opening statement that I think kind of sums up my entire position. Um, I'll, I'll also give you a couple of examples um, uh, of, of kind of where I'm going with this, but let me just kind of start at the top. This is you know, what I said for my opening uh, statement. Um, during the race at Phoenix, I made contact with Ross Chastain during a green-white checkered finish while contesting a position inside the top 10. When my car began, began sliding up the racetrack, entering turn one, I had a decision to make. Either hit the brakes and let most all my competitors around me pass with ease or fight for my position. I chose to fight for my position, and by doing that, I made contact with Ross. I was ahead of Ross at the time we made contact. I did not seek him out. I entered the core, the corner the exact same way I had on previous restarts. Please see attached data. So we showed data showing that I entered the corner with less speed than I had on all previous restarts. What you will see is that I entered the corner with the exact if not less speed entering the corner that I had on previous restarts that day. In fact, I had turned the wheel farther left than I did on every restart previously. Never once did I turn right to steer into Ross. You will also see in the data provided, I actually hit the brakes once I saw contact was imminent. Once I made contacts in turn one and two, all the other contact that was initiated the rest of the lap was by Ross slamming on the brakes. Which, actually, uh, which cost us more spots. So the next day, I went on my new podcast form with Dale Earnhardt Jr. and said that the incident was not an accident. And that is true. It was not an accident. It was contact that could have been avoided. However, given my history with Ross over the last 12 months, what I chose to do was not cut Ross a break. I chose to put him in a compromising position where he could either hit the brakes or we were going to make contact and I was going to be okay with either result. What I did is what every driver does and that is race someone just like you've been raced. I've gotten no respect from him, so I chose not to give any. I didn't wreck him. I didn't spin him as NASCAR is contesting. I simply made contact that was avoidable. Contact so minor that there was no vehicle damage done to either car. No caution was brought out, and we both finished the race on the lead lap in 23rd and 24th. No innocent bystanders were involved, and it certainly did not affect the outcome of the winner. As far as race manipulation, is concerned, this is just untrue. I mentioned first and foremost in my podcast that my intention was to get the best finish for my team that I could. That was the first statement I said when addressing this situation. And if you listen, the next sentence I say, I'm, I'm speaking off my opening statement now, is I turned the wheels left and my car went dead straight. So what happened on that last restart was hard racing between two competitors with a history. And that's what it was. It was hard, aggressive driving as defined in their rule book. And I have the quote in their rule book. And basically what that says, uh, this is not going to be totally for verbatim, but it is going to be 99% there, is that we understand that NASCAR is a physical sport and that we understand that aggressive driving happens. And sometimes contact happens during that aggressive driving. We will rule as such during the event, and there should be no further penalties. That's in their rule book. That's their definition. So I said, what I was doing was playing into the rivalry that NASCAR itself promotes on a weekly basis. The facts are that I reached out to NASCAR Tuesday morning, the moment I heard that they were even looking into this. And I said, if they had any questions 
to please give me a call about what actually happened. I never heard anything back until I had a fine and point penalty. When I asked NASCAR themselves, if they gave me the penalty because of my words or um, my action, I asked them, did they give me the penalty because of my actions on the track or my words? They said, your words. Listen, that is just not right. And I have proof that my actions were not out of line nor egregious. Had NASCAR truly done an investigation of this incident or even had a conversation with me following the event, they would, re they would have realized just that. But I do, be I do not believe I should have championship points or a monetary fine for what happened on the racetrack. They said themselves that this was a racing incident which is the, the same sentiment that my competitors who benefit from my penalty are saying. It was a racing incident. Please consider this appeal and use facts and data to reverse this decision by NASCAR. So, so that, that's, that's your opening statement. Yep. After NASCAR comes in and says, this is why Denny Hamlin mm -hmm. is guilty. So after that, I basically went into a full spread of SMT data yep. showing exactly what I stated there. All right, Denny, hold up. What is the significance of the SMT data? Well, again, it's for me, it's it's proving defense, right? That that I um, entered, you know, I didn't seek out Ross, right? I I didn't turn the SMT into data showing that you didn't actually take your hands off the wheel. Yeah. So. Like, yeah, so, guys, we, we got to be a little bit understand here. I'm trying to speak to you guys on a microphone. And I can't see you. you. You don't see the cars. You know, I, I can't do a little, hey, look at this car. It did this, that, and the other, right? I'm trying. I'm a, I'm a color commentator at this point, right? So I'm trying to give color to an incident that happened on track. You listen to MRN. You know why it sounds so exciting? It's because they make it more exciting than probably what it really is. I think this is probably the case here where, there was a little exaggeration going on for sure. Of course, I didn't let my hands off the wheel, Jared. I would, <laughs> I would go straight into the fence, and and it would have been bad. And the good news is, NASCAR in, at least acknowledged he did not let his hands off the wheel. Well, then that goes to bear. Well, if that part's not true, what else part of his story is not true? But listen, I'm not. I don't want to sit here and call myself uh, an embellisher, but I'm. I certainly told the truth in the sense of. It wasn't an accident. I addressed it in my opening statement. It could have been avoided, but I didn't get a break from him in the past. I chose to not give him a break. I was okay with contact happen. I put Ross to a decision, either check up or we're going to hit. And I was fine with either result, but we hit and we kept going, right? So contact, it was contact. It wasn't a wreck. It wasn't a spin. That's what I'm contesting, right? And it certainly is not manipulation in the race. And I know that to be true because I've provided plenty of examples of exactly what race manipulation is. And I don't mean to upset anyone who might be a fan, but I'm sorry, Chase Elliott coming back onto the racetrack at Bristol, multiple laps down, asking where the five car is so he can quote unquote help him out is race manipulation. He blocked the four car to allow his teammate to win. We went to a gambling seminar in January and they explained that we consider race manipulation when you do something that um, manipulates the finish of the race that would directly benefit yourself or a teammate. I think they put that in the rules because of that incident. And so, you know, I, I have many examples. I started rolling tape on all these crashes in the last four years where drivers openly said, he did this to me, so I Gave it to him back on a microphone right after the race. Or sometimes in Cal Larson's um, case after the clash when he admitted to wrecking Justin Haley and he said, hey, listen, I, 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 I probably overreacted there. That's on a pub, it, it's public. So you, by NASCAR's rule, how is that not the same thing? Joey Logano knocked William Byron out of the way at Darlington and says, hey, if you're going to do this to me, what do you expect you're going to get? You're going to get it right back. You know, I knew that uh, there was one way I could guarantee winning the race. 
I, I, I told them, let me save you the trouble of watching hours and hours of film of the 90s, 2000s, 2010s of drivers saying, F yeah, I'm, I'm getting them and I'm getting them back or I'm going to do it this week or next week or, or maybe after the race or it's even on the radio. You know, these are things that NASCAR monitors and I create, and I had so many examples and, um, I found it interesting that, uh, NASCAR acknowledged that what you say after the event, they think is at the heat of the battle and can't be taken seriously. So maybe if you're going to, as a driver, do something, maybe you should just admit it right away because they admit you're hot and angry. But what I did was admit it after I've cooled down 24 hours later. I said, well, that's interesting because I have an interview from uh, Joey Logano on his championship tour this offseason where he's, they talk about the wreck in which he retaliated uh, against me at California and that, that broke my back and injured me for a couple months. And they said, Joey, what, you know, what would you do different? And he's like, you know, that's just basically, that's the way I am. And I, you know, you know with me that if, if you rest, race me aggressively or whatever, you know, I, I basically he said with me that I I didn't show remorse. I, I boasted about it, and so hey, I I got him back, and so I don't really take anything back. And that's just the way that it's going to be. It's what NASCAR was built on for seventy five years, and you know what? I agree with that. And I said that's the problem, and that's what we really need to think about with this case is that I think a lot is on the line at this point. I you have drivers that don't know where the line is now. I am worried for the future of our sport and the last thing we want is our drivers timid, not only off the racetrack now, but on the racetrack. Like, and they called this an agree, what, well, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm wrong on this. NASCAR conceded this was not egregious and it was very subjective. I thought, for the last two hours of this hearing, they conceded that they had lost the first two points and that all they're going for is actually Fine. detrimental. And so there was a key point where I think one of the panelists was asking me, what result do you want? Do you want all or nothing? And I'm like, oh, I got to be careful with that. Because you went into this hearing. You I were wanted it all you reversed. Wanted I wanted it all reversed because this was this was casual contact by two hard racing rivals that's a fact can't twist it any other way right and my intent doesn't matter that's been taken out of the rule book so i just really feel like we made a strong case to this I, i've given you panel a list of 35 of the last retaliatory incidents every one of them that has a monetary or a point penalty has either been someone wrecks someone under caution safety vehicles are out there it's a it's a dangerous moment it was a right rear hook so basically you go down the straightaway you turn right on somebody and you hook them right in the fence and destroy them it resulted in a caution because the wreck was so severe so severe that it was a caution mine was none of these none of them it shouldn't even be on the page with the retaliatory the last 35 retaliatory um, incidents. That's what scares me about this. And I believe that, and I explained, the most detrimental thing we can do is tell drivers, you can't be yourselves. I heard Mike Davis talking about this on Dirty Mo Live right after, but it's so true. William Byron, who is represented by the same person, told Rod, I ain't doing no podcast now. Like, I'm afraid of getting in a bad position and saying the wrong thing. And now you don't even have to say, I crash Ross. You can just in, in, you can just vaguely say it and they can interpret it however they want. And that's what's scary, right? Is we, we have a star power problem in our sport. And I'm not sitting here saying I'm trying to be a star, but I'm trying to be honest and transparent. I'm trying to do what others are not doing and that's being themselves because a lot of these guys are awesome dudes but nascar using me an example will inhibit them or prevent them from wanting to come out of their shell 
and sometimes be controversial or sometimes call out a rival. Like it's just, this is, it's crazy because in NASCAR's two page report, they says we encourage drivers to self police. How can you self police and not manipulate the race? It is impossible. It's impossible. Tell me how. I can't go punch him in the face because that's a fine. I don't understand, right? If we were confused after yesterday, we shouldn't be. I told you last week, well, a colleague slam dunk. I said, well, wait a minute. Don't be so sure. And I think today cements that my tweet from last week, I don't know anymore. I don't know. Two, two different panelists found the same infraction. Uh, we're assuming same infraction with a different result. Speaking of the colleague and Hendrick appeals. The panel for Hendrick acknowledged that they did something that they shouldn't hate, altered the race car for a performance advantage. Essentially, let me call it, they cheated. But yet, I rubbed Ross against the fence and deserve a 25-point penalty. They had four cars that were illegal. It doesn't make any sense. And I'm not beating up the, this process because I told you, I think the process is fair. I just don't understand where we're getting these various outcomes. So I don't want to see him change it. I think that it's, it is a very fair thing. I, I came on here and I have to be, I'm done with it after this because I promised my team owner, if you let me appeal, I'll let it go. I promise I'll let it go, right? But this concerns me because the results don't make any sense. And when the, when the panel is consistently calling out NASCAR for them crossing words and saying, you're contradicting yourself, I don't get it. NASCAR themselves is saying, yeah, this is probably a subjective call. It's not egregious, we agree. Then, then why are we in the room? You want me to self-police? Tell me how to do it then. I tried breakfast. That didn't work. I, it, it's just disappointing. So you said this is it. You, for In respect to JGR and, and your team owner, you're not going to go any further with this. Yep. But you do sound surprised that this uh, result went this way. When you're in the room um, pleading your case and hearing from NASCAR, like, did you feel that this was going to go your way? Did you feel it wasn't going to go your way? I was more confident when they started deliberating than I was going into my case. Now, again, I might be guilty. I, th I don't know. You, somehow, you were on one side, right? When I initially said, well, here's what I'm saying, Jared. This is, this is my defense. This, you know, let's use past precedent. This, wreck, this wasn't a wreck. This wasn't a spin. No caution, no damage. What are we even talking about here? This is contact as defined by their rule book. Um, I was, we were, we were high-fiving just about <laughs> that we did such a great job. And I really based that off of the, the, the panel was asking NASCAR, how is this so different than what we see every single week? And there really wasn't a legitimate, I thought, good response to that. And I thought that, man, there seems to be questioning them a lot and they not really have a whole lot of questions for me. Um, I thought Lynn had a really good question for me though. I won't expand on that, but she was, she was really good. She was writing down a bunch of notes and um, I'll tell you. So we went back there and they said, just sit back here and they'll deliberate and we're, we'll, uh, we'll let you know when they're, they come to a verdict. I, we were kind of really high fiving and 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 smiling like man we really we presented as good as we could present i feel so good at it simply because too we had heard words that in the last 2 hours sounded like they were conceding we're just going after actions detrimental he just can't be saying these things cuz it makes us look like we're not officiating it correctly they they already said we agree it's not egregious we agree that this is something that normally we we stay out of. Um, the whole severity of the incident was just not, should, it was benign. Benign was the word used. So 
we think, okay, well, I think worst case, I said, I'm, I think we're getting the whole thing thrown out. Um, they come, I use the restroom and they come right back. I mean, it had to be maybe 10 minutes. So the panel walks out. Yep. You- no, we walk out of the room. The panel stays. Okay. The three of them talk it out and then they notify, you know, it's almost like a, like a jury thing where they notify, Hey, the jury foreman, we have a verdict. Uh, they came back and says, Hey, they're, they're done. I'm like, Oh wow. This is going to be great. Can't wait. I'm sitting down and I'm smiling and I kind of look at them and they're, they're, they're not as excited as they were like 20 minutes ago. And I'm just like, all right. Okay. And literally they read off the verdict in about 15 seconds. And it was so quick. And they're like, that's it. And everyone starts standing up and I'm looking at <laughs> Eric and I'm like, wait a minute. What'd they say? Like, what, the, what did they say? I, he's like, they're keeping it as is. I says, okay, why? No, no reason. It just, that's, that's where, you know, when the media talks about, well, well, why? Why is the difference in the Hendrick and the Colic? Well, nobody knows because we don't have an explanation. And But I do understand, too, when you have a jury, they don't explain why. Now, they'll come out in interviews later on and say, here's the reason why I voted this way or another. But like when you have a judge, like a civil case, they do explain, well, you're guilty and here's why, right? That one was one that flipped 180. I mean, we were in shock. I was in absolute shock to where I was frozen there. And I'm looking at Eric and he's looking at me and we're just like, wait a minute, I, are you sure they just weren't reading off the proceedings? Like it happened so quick and with no explanation, I was just like, that's it? And then we went back to our room and then we just stared at each other. Again, for a while, it had to be 10, 15 minutes and we're just scratching our heads and I'm like, holy shit, what just happened? Because if I'm if I'm in there and I hear everything that goes on, how in the world could they vote this way? But they did. And so I still am in shock, but I I don't think that, you know, I don't know that I should be, but I know that the process is fair. I you know, I don't know what else I can say about it is that they just didn't agree, you know, agree with the defense or it's weird. I, I just don't get it and I'm I'm at a loss for words now. I need to just kinda end this, but certainly I'm shocked.